Hey YouTube, this is Moreno. He's going to show you how to take off the crash, crash bars. bars. Yeah, off the, uh, off the bronchial. It's actually really simple. These are the base models, so they have these, this bumper style. So you have this plastic stock bumper style. This is a procedure for that. The Sasquatch with the modular bumper is a little bit different. You just remove the end caps, so on and so forth. So these are dummy proof. You really can't mess it up. You only need two tools. Unless you're a dummy. Unless you're a dummy. Then that's another dummy for help. So basically, believe it or not, this comes off just like this. Bam. Your, your $30,000 vehicle just falls apart just like this. <laughs> So what I learned, you don't have to take the whole bumper off. Everyone swears you gotta take the whole bumper off. No, you just take these three 15 millimeter bolts out. I loosen them all the way out so I can get maybe like, I think it's like two inches of play on the inside. And then I start working over there. Check them out to like right about there so I can actually have room to play. If I need a little bit more, I'll adjust them out. So lads, we're going to be using power tools. So I got a 3 inch drive with a 15 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter wrench. So, so it's pretty straightforward. So on the front, you only had to take them off on the top. The bottom nuts are actually welded to the chassis, so you don't have to worry about those falling out. You're just going to reach in here, grab this one and this one, unloosen it. They're tight as shit. So be prepared for that. Ooh. Almost he ate, fell off the sidewalk. Almost ate all the shit. <laughs> if there was shit there, I would have ate it. So this one on the rear. So this is a combination. I just used the uh, the box wrench on the back one and a ratchet on the front one. That's all you gotta do. And then when I take them out, you take them out, put them back in. So let me work on the first one because that's the one that's a little bit more complicated. As you can see how the bumper is covering it. So because we loosen the screws, now I'm able just to slide it out, but the screws won't fall out either. And there's like a little plate between the bumper and that that you want to keep together. And this is a 21 base Bronco. It's the same. I got a big bend on the other side. It's the exact same for basically all the trim levels. Yeah, this while I was talking about how tight they are. You don't have to put them back in that tight either. And I would recommend not doing that because what you're going to do is compress the bracket. So you can never put them back in again. You had to stretch the bracket back out. So just put them in there snug, snug enough so they don't back out when you're driving down the road. Two out, All right? Here's the magic part. Push this out of the way. Is that that work? That's why you need the bumper open. Once you do that, take your bolts, put them right back in the hole. It's a good place to store them. You don't have to, but it helps keep the threads clean. So it's good. Just put them back in there. So if you see a shop charging you like a hundred dollars to do this, it only takes three tools. You don't even need an uh, impact. Oh, we got a baby. He's upset. Oh, someone hurt his feelings. Who hurt his feelings? He did. Oh. Uh, you said shop charging you a hundred dollars. Yeah, that's yeah, shop charging a hundred dollars. Yeah, he don't like that. That's not his favorite thing. And there you go. Front's gone. Right here, it's the same way. But the rear you don't have to worry about the bumper. So if you want to put the bumper back on, you can. So this is where it gets interesting. Front one's always easy. The wheel liner gets a little in the way. 
but it's nothing terribly bad. But I don't want to remove the wheel liner to take up one bolt. This is where it gets not so fun. Yeah. There you go. I definitely definitely recommend doing this before you put tires and everything else on here because more tire that's in the way, the harder it's gonna be to do this. It's mostly because of the angle. If you have a lift, obviously you can lift it up. You can get right beside it. It's a lot easier. But you don't even have to lift up your vehicle to do this, so. Choice is yours at that point. It's whatever's more efficient for you. But for most average people, they don't have a lift or access to a lift. Your driveway, garage, your mall parking lot. Auto wherever, zone. Auto zone. <laughs> you know, where, wherever your favorite part store is. So the real one, all you gotta do definitely just push the liner back a little bit, it strike the bolt, and it'll just come right out. Get this one out. And then you'll be ready for your lift. And it literally takes seven minutes. And it literally takes seven minutes. It's all charge so much. Sasquatch models don't come with these. They don't care if you crash on the Sasquatch. There you go. Second crash bar. Put the bolt right in. Always thread them all the way in by hand. Now, see, you have like an air wrench or, you know, impact wrench, whatever. You can use it to put it back in. It might fit, might not fit, but it doesn't require a, a significant amount of torque on these to keep them uh, held in there. But at the same time, unless you have a spacer, because these come with spacers inside of them to prevent them from being crushed. So, so unless you have a spacer to throw in there, do not over tighten them. Because you'll never be able to put that back in there correctly. Unless you bang them in there. Let's leave that one snug. Well, I'm gonna show you the front bumper and the base of the And then we did the whole process. I'll give it a couple of auger dugs. You'll know based off an experience how many auger dugs you need. If you don't know what an auger dug is, you probably shouldn't do it. Rear, pop all the way back in. Job's complete. Just torque down these last few bolts, and that's the whole process. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Have a beautiful time.